Hey, what's up everybody? Tommy Meyer here. Three days to go. Seems like just yesterday it was only an hour ago. Seriously, time is going so slow. I just want this to be over. <laughs> now, uh, the, we're still waiting on uh, uh, the last batch of polls to come out, including some high quality polls of uh, Pennsylvania, as well as um, the uh, the last seltzer poll in Iowa is going to come out later today. So I'm not going to make my final prediction just yet. Instead, today, what I wanted to do is go through some hypotheticals. Um, I want to picture uh, it's November 4th or 5th or 6th or whenever we learn the results. Um, either Donald Trump won or Joe Biden won. And I want to think about what the narrative is going to be. So I'll start with an easy one, a Joe Biden win, a decisive Joe Biden win. I think the narrative following that is going to, the narrative about 2016 is going to change, I think. Uh, right now, we view 2016 as Trump bucking conventional wisdom. You know, the polls were wrong. He defied all the polls, outsmarted everybody, reached these voters who were, uh, 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 un, you know, unspoken to before. Um, <clears throat> and... I think if there's a huge Biden win, we're going to be looking at 2016 more in terms of Donald Trump got really lucky. Uh, he needed a lot of things to go his way if he was going to win. Um, he, the Comey letter. Um, he needed uh, undecideds to swing um, uh, decisively in his favor, which they did, and a pretty decent size polling error. Remember, Donald Trump was given almost a 30% chance of winning on election day. Being surprised by a Donald Trump win is like being surprised that a 300 hitter in baseball gets a hit. It's not that surprising. Now moving on to a Trump win, which would be pretty surprising, to be honest. Um, I think if Trump wins, take everything I just said and throw it out. I'm wrong about everything. Uh, we'll have to definitely rethink polling because uh, Trump is way behind in the polling right now. Um, I think in the post-mortem, the Biden campaign will probably look at two things. Uh, uh, one is uh, their decision not to knock on doors. Uh, Re Republicans and the Trump campaign have a massive uh, door knocking operation and you can see it in the uh, Republican registrations that's been outpacing Democrats pretty significantly. Now I wouldn't look too into that because remember Democrats had this very competitive primary so they got a lot of registration done uh, in the primary season and of course um, just because you register with a party doesn't mean you're going to vote that way but I think the failure to knock on doors, the, the lack of a ground game will be something that we look back on and say that's probably why we lost. And the other thing is uh, Biden's failure to reach Latino voters. Um, he's going to win Latinos, you know, by a decisive margin, but he's actually underperforming where Hillary was four years ago. Donald Trump is actually doing better with Latinos now than he did four years ago. And so I think um, the Biden campaign is going to look back and say why, you know, Bernie had a great uh, Latino outreach. And they'll probably say, why didn't we talk to Bernie's people and, 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 and do better outreach for Latinos. The other thing I want to do today, um, so those are the two narratives, uh, uh, that one of those narratives will happen, or they won't, and I'm wrong about everything. We'll see. Um, the other thing I want to do today is talk about sleeper states. What are sleeper states? Sleeper states are states that are expected to go one way, um, that are going to go the other way sort of the um, Michigan-Wisconsin of 2020. Now, no, I'm not saying that I believe that these states are going to uh, uh, switch, but um, these are, I think, the most likely sleeper states. So I want to start with, well, oh, yeah, by the way, Biden has a 90% chance of winning. Not bad. Uh, my first sleeper state is... Drum roll, please. No, no drum roll. Um, Nevada. Uh, Nevada is a state that has a big Latino population. It's one that Biden underperformed in, in the primaries. Remember, Bernie had that decisive win. Um, 
and it's a state that Biden is not doing insanely well in. He's only up 5.9 points in the polling average. That's less than he's up in Michigan and Wisconsin. It wouldn't be a huge surprise. And, and no one's been really talking about Nevada as a swing state. It's expected to go blue. But I wouldn't be insanely surprised if it went uh, to Trump. Now, my sleeper state that's going to go from uh, red to blue, and I believe this one really has a chance, it's Texas. Biden's currently given about a 34% chance to win in Texas. <clears throat> he is down in the polling averages by about one and a half points, a little bit less. Um, Texas is a hard to poll state. Um, there is, uh, so polling error is basically, uh, the reason you have polling error is because there are certain demographics that are hard to reach. In states up in the upper Midwest, <clears throat> it's um, white voters without a college degree. They just don't answer polls uh, that often. They don't answer the phone that often. Um, in Texas and a lot of the Southwest uh, states, it is Latinos. There's a um, language barrier there. Um, and so when pollsters can't reach a certain demographic that is um, uh, uh, that, that there's a lot of in a state, they have to basically just kind of guess how they're going to vote and then wait. Um, so Latinos uh, in, in Texas who often um, uh, don't speak English are hard to reach. So there's a reason to believe that they may be undercounted. 2016 and 18 actually underestimated Democrats' chances, uh, the polls in Texas. The other thing is there's no party registration. So it's harder for pollsters to know that they're getting a, f uh, a representative sample since they don't know if they're getting enough Democrats and Republicans. Um, Texas has already surpassed its uh, 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 2016 vote totals. Um, just in the early vote, uh, it's a hard to poll state. Uh, there's a reason to believe that, that Biden's doing better than his polls there. I really think that Texas, in fact, I'm gonna make a bold prediction right here. I would not be surprised if Biden wins Texas, but loses Florida. You heard it here first, folks. So that is my sleeper states. Uh, stay tuned or come back or do something else uh, tomorrow or election day for my final uh, prediction. Good night.